Chris Davis, thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into it. So when I saw the breakaway artwork, I legitimately thought that this was something for Rainbow Six Siege, but no, this is actually for Insurgency Sandstorm. Boy, was I wrong. But I mean, the artwork just reminded me a lot of uh, Rainbow Six Siege, so I legitimately thought that it was that. But no, this is the update for Insurgency Sandstorm. It's called Breakaway. And after playing the update, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what Breakaway means. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing that we're going to be talking about is the two guns that were added to the game. The first one is called the AUG A3. I actually quite like the way that this one looks, and it actually really handles well. This gun actually has next to nothing when it comes to recoil, and the sights on it are pretty good. This is definitely my favorite of the two. I really wasn't a fan of the other gun. The other gun, I don't feel the same for. The other one is the FAMAS F1. And to be honest, it's really just an okay gun. It's a gun that fires a lot faster than the AUG, so the recoil is definitely up there. It's a little harder to control, but if you're doing single shot, it's not that big a deal. The iron sights are just okay on it. Three round burst is not that bad either, but going full auto will really be hard to really control, in my opinion. And by the time that you think that you got control, all the bullets are basically gone. So shooting isn't really that big of an issue, but I think the biggest issue that I have is that the gun, when you decide to put an attachment like an AUG or something on the top of it, it basically covers up like half my screen. I've heard a couple of subscribers say that that's not how you're actually supposed to put a scope on top of this gun, but I'm not entirely sure. Somebody wants to tell me down below how you're supposed to do that, but I will say that that is a very high place to put a scope, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, the thing basically covers up like a quarter of my screen, and I really don't like that. So AUG all the way. Along with these weapons comes attachments. The first attachment that we're going to talk about is the M26 Mass. It's basically an underbarrel shotgun that can be used on the AUG, the M16A4, and M4A1. They also have the master key which actually goes on a lot more weapons we got the m16a4 m4a1 akm ak74 m16a2 and the famas f1 i've seen that the master key doesn't look good on some of these weapons though let's get into specifics here reloading is better on the mass because you're able to speed reload inside the magazine it contains five rounds that's more than the master key you cannot speed reload the master key as far as i know because you're only able to reload single shots into the master key and the master key has has three shots but it is possible to add an extra into the chamber the master key seems to fire faster than the m26 people have said that the master key does more damage than the m26 mass but i can't really confirm or deny that but some have said that the spread is tighter on the master key than it is on the mass so it's interesting if i had to criticize anything from these two i would say that the mass has a weird like reloading animation sometimes it would randomly reload the back mag instead of the actual mag that goes you know where it's supposed to reload but i think that was just just a glitch that they're fixing at the moment. It's definitely something that's really fun to use, but I'm not really a close quarters type of guy, or at least when I play this game. I usually like to stay away from people in this game, but I mean, if I ever get into that situation, I guess I'll use it. It's definitely fun when I do, and uh, yeah, that was the M26 mask and the master key. One last thing that I neglected to see, I initially thought that it was the grenade launcher that was new, but apparently that's been in the game for over two years, was actually the buckshot launcher. That's apparently new, and I didn't see it before, so let's go ahead and talk about it. It seems to be pretty common with the AK variants. It's only a single shot, but the spread I think is a lot less than the master keys. And I think it does a lot more damage to be honest. It only has five rounds and you're pretty much done, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like an insta kill if you actually hit someone. And yeah, that's pretty much that for under barrels that are new anyway. Let's get into the next thing here. Along with that, they also have a couple of grips. They've got the quick draw grip, loading grip, aiming grip, recoil grip, point shooting grip, recoil grip, bipod. Yeah, and I think that's it. If there's any more, let me know. No idea if any of these groups are good. I have not tried them. I've only tried out the shotgun attachment and that's pretty much it. So that basically does it for the weapons. Let's push on to something else here. Let's talk about the new map. Was it good? Was it bad? Let's get into it. This is a map that they've been teasing in previous videos that I've seen on their channel. Is it a new map? Not necessarily. It's a revamped Insurgency 2014 map that's called Tell and it's actually a pretty good one. See, this is not the first time that these developers have decided to go back to their Insurgency 2014 groups and bring back a map that 
that was there and put it into this game. But it is the first time that this actually feels like a full-on revamped map because the previous maps that I've seen felt more rehashed than revamped. Like it actually feels like they put a lot more time and effort into this map alone because I could see a lot of the detail that has been added. There's been a lot more corridors. Some of the buildings look a little more thought out because I remember the previous map straight looked like a freaking map from the original Halo 2 Mombasa map or something. Like this is like a significant upgrade. So I applaud them for, you know, remaking this map and it's such a good way. But at the same time, it's a map that we've seen before. And this kind of gets into my argument that I had in previous uploads. Like I kind of wish that they had actually redid every map already so that we can move on to the newer ones, you know? So I definitely like the map, but the thing is, is that it's not an actual new map. It's an older map that's been completely revamped. And that kind of does take some points down for me, but at least it's a newer map to the game. So there's that. Did the map actually play well? Um, I hardly actually played this map on co-op, to be honest. I played it more on multiplayer, and I gotta say that if I was somebody who actually played this game a lot on multiplayer, then maybe I would think that it's better, but I didn't have the best experience. I'm not really sure how this map actually plays, especially with all the new corridors that have been added, and the new, like, nooks and crannies here and there. If anything, I was more confused moving throughout the map. Like, I would really need to play the game a lot more to actually get to know the map. But this game isn't really my main game, you know? I just like to hop on it every now and then, and, uh, yeah. Let's move on to the new game mode here. The new game mode is essentially like, uh, the game mode from Battlefield 5, where you're holding an area, and if you get overrun by the enemy, they push you back to another area, until you run out of areas to fall back to, and the enemies come at you in waves. The waves are based on time, not how many enemies there are, because it seems like the enemies are limitless, but they run away as soon as the timer runs out. After every wave, there's downtime to restock on ammo or switch out your gear. Gear is based on points, and they really don't start you out with a lot. Like, they only start you out with enough just to buy a pistol, so you have to, like, work your way up after every round. I'm not sure how many points they actually distribute to you after every round, though. You only have one light, but it gets replenished after every wave. If everybody dies on one wave, then you get pushed back to another area, and everybody gets another life. Like, the game doesn't stop if everybody dies, it just gets pushed back and we get revived for the next wave. The game only stops if we run out of areas to fall back to. It's actually a lot of fun. This is probably one of the better game modes that I've actually played on this game, to be honest. And I believe it's only for co-op. I'm not entirely sure if uh, multiplayer got this or any game mode at all. I want to say that it did, but I I I'm not sure. I don't think multiplayer really got a game mode, did it, huh? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're holding out more updates for this update for when it launches. Who knows? But overall, I thought that this was a good update, better than the last one, but it's not a big update. I mean, after two months of waiting, we pretty much got the same update as we got last time. A map and two guns, and that map isn't new. It's a revamped map, some cosmetics and attachments, with the addition of a game mode that I actually liked. So I think that this one was, you know, slightly better, but it's about the same amount of content as we got two months ago. So I thought that it was, you know, just good, above average, I would say. So yeah, that's really all I got to say about that. I mentioned cosmetics. Someone who was in my stream actually tweeted out some uh, unfinished cosmetics, and I thought that we would go over them. Let's see, uh, we got uh, a camouflaged hood, I would say. It's called the uh, Urban Warden Headgear. I'm assuming that these are going to be all stuff that you have to buy through the uh, Steam store or whatever. You have like this armor that goes over the shoulders. It kind of looks like they actually took this from Ready or Not. It reminds me a lot of the uh, suspect armor, how it's kind of just strapped on. That's what it reminds me of. Then we have like this other armor. It looks like more heavy duty armor that goes on the knees. It reminds me of uh, the armor from freaking, uh, I think it was Payday. We also got these gloves, the Urban Warden gloves, Urban Warden pants. This one actually isn't named. The shirt isn't named, but I'm assuming it's the same thing. And then we got the Insurgents, the Rogue Spec Ops headgear, and it's basically like a, a skull with a hijab all around it. I think that's how you say that, right? Hijab. And then you got like this, I'm not sure what the heck this is. This is the Rogue Spec Ops torso. That looks pretty cool. Uh, it reminds me of Escape from Tarkov attire. Uh, like, you know, like the regular guy. And then you got the pants here. They're called the Rogue Spec Op Pants. It doesn't look too bad. This actually looks like a Spec Ops type of guy. And the regular boots. These look like boots from freaking um, like the rubber boots that you, you walk in like tall water with. Rogue Spec Op Boots. So that's pretty neat. Uh, he also showed off some uh, icons for these clothing. Okay, okay. Some more icons. We got glasses, shirts, pants. He also sent me this uh, picture of a sword 
in some kind of jewel shape. The thing says Twitch Army, so are they trying to start something up on Twitch? Like a partner program, I'm assuming? Like how Escape from Tarkov did the whole taking over Twitch at one point? Like they're gonna do that, I'm assuming? That would actually be a pretty big thing if it was actually successful, but who knows, we'll see. And yeah, that's pretty much all we got. I wanna thank Tactical Tail Light for the generous pictures and everybody who decided to actually play with me while I was recording this. And uh, yeah, this is where I'm gonna end the video. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like Insurgency Sandstorm, be sure to share the video, like the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon, just send two bucks a month. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. Stick around, you never know. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.